Hello guys, good morning. You are welcome to my YouTube channel, The Explicit Tutorials. As you all know, I'm Dr. Joseph or Mr. Explicit. Please, as you are watching this video, you will endeavor to subscribe, like, share, and comment. In today's video, we shall be discussing a very interesting topic in physics. And that topic is reflection through curved surfaces. And we are referring to what? Lenses, all right? In our previous class, we discussed what mirrors are and the topic was reflection at plain and curved surfaces and we of course explained concave mirrors and convex mirrors all right and we also look at the different terms or terminologies associated with mirror such as a vertex the focal length the radius of curvature center of curvature principal focus and we also treated three types of rays all right, which are the chief or radical rays, we have the focal rays, and we have the parallel rays. But in this class, we are focusing on lenses. Lenses. What are lenses? What are lenses? Lenses can be defined as lenses can be defined as optical systems. Alright, having two refractive, having two refracting surfaces lenses are optical systems having two refracting what surfaces all right and lenses are mostly made up of glasses all right they are mostly made up of what glasses and of course in some cases they can be made up of plastics or crystals as the case may be so lenses can be defined as optical systems having two refracting surfaces and are mostly uh, mostly or commonly made up of glasses in some cases you have them to be plastics and what crystals please take note of that now of course we have uh, we have different types of lenses all right we have different types of lenses please and please we said that concave mirrors are also called converging mirrors. Concave mirrors are also called what? Converging mirrors. While convex mirrors are also called diverging mirrors. Please, the opposite is the case when it comes to what? lenses. Please, concave lens, concave lens is also called diverging lens. It's also called diverging lens. Then you now have convex lens. Convex lens is also called what? Converging lens. You see that? In mirrors, we say that con concave mirrors are also called converging mirrors. Convex mirrors are also called diverging mirrors. But in lenses, the opposite becomes the case. Concave lens, diverging lens, convex lens, Converging lens. All right. Now we now have on a broad note different types of lenses. All right. We have some that will look like this. This one I will call double concave. I have also have this one. This one I will call plano concave. Plano concave, and this I will call. This I'll call concave meniscus. Alright? Double concave, plano concave, and what? Concave meniscus. Alright? We now also have another one that, that looks like this. What I have here is called double convex. Double convex. Alright? I also have one that will, look, that, that will look like this. Um, I'll call this plano convex. And I have one that looks like this. Uh, what I have here is called uh, convex meniscus. So we have double concave, we have plano concave, we have concave meniscus, all right? We have double convex, we have plano convex, 
and convex meniscus. Now, how would you describe a concave lens? Now, please, we say that lenses have two uh, refracting what, surfaces. Now, please, a type of lens, a type of lens that is thinner at the middle but thicker at the edges is called what? Concave lens. A type of lens that is thicker at the edges, all right, but thinner at the middle is called what? Concave lenses, all right? But the type of lens that is much more thicker at the, at the middle and appears thinner at the tip or at the edges is called what? Convex lens. You see, it is thicker at the middle but much more thinner at the edge. The opposite is the case when you are, this, when you are referring to what? Concave lens. Concave lens, the middle is thin while the edges are thick. But this one, the middle is thick while the edges are thin, all right? So please take note of that. Now, apart from that, we also said that in concave mirrors, we said that in concave mirrors, radius, we said that focal length, focal length, as well as radius of curvature are positive. In concave mirrors, Focal length and radius of curvature are positive, right? Please, in concave lens, in concave lens, please, focal length and radius of, cur of curvature are what? Negative. I feel these markers, so I don't know. They are negative. Concave lens, focal length and radius of curvature are what? Negative. But in convex lens, we said that convex mirrors have their focal length and radius of curvature as what? Negative, right? But a concave lens has the focal length and radius of curvature as what? Positive. Positive. You see that? So you have to take note of this, okay? Now, we, we said that these two guys, they have curved two curved refracting surfaces. Now, if they have two curved refracting surfaces, it means that they have two center of what? Curvature. That is curvature one and what? Curvature two. They also have two focal length. Focal length one and what? Focal length what? Two. Lenses have two radius, two center of curvature. They also have two focal length. Lenses, they have opposite features to mirrors. You have to take note of that. Now, also note that, also note that concave lens, owing to the fact that in concave lens, owing to the fact that in concave lens, they, we said that focal length, said that focal length, and radius of curvature are what? Negative. If the focal length and radius of curvature are negative in concave lens, it means that the image is virtual. Alright? It means that the image is what? Virtual, alright? It is virtual, which means a negative image. And we said that in convex mirror, radius of curvature and focal length are what? Negative. All right, they are okay. This one's okay, they are negative. This one's are what positive, right? Double that is convex lenses, the focal length and rates of curvature are what positive, but in mirrors, they are what negative. It therefore means that concave, oh god, of my mind is all right. It therefore means that concave or oh, convex, sorry, convex, it means that convex lenses. All right, have real images, real images because the focal length and radius of curvature are what? Positive. Real image is always positive, while virtual image is what? Negative. 
please take note of that it is very very important now based on based on objects and image based on objects and image you can see the way i'm taking it bit by bit to prevent confusion now i told you guys that in mirrors the absolute value of magnification is greater than one when the image is what enlarged when it's enlarged or magnified but the absolute value of m when it's less than one it means that the image is what reduced is reduced or what diminished reduced or what diminished and the absolute value of magnification is equals one when the image is real or what true isn't that correct it is very very correct please take note that in lenses in lenses magnification is plus when the image is upright when the image is upright or what erect in lenses magnification is positive when the images are upright or erect and the images are that is when magnification is uh, negative it means that the image are um, inverted they are what inverted because opposite form of upright is what inverted all right please the object is said to be the object, which is you, is said to be negative when it's at when it's at the position of the lens. Object, the object is said to be negative when it is situated at the position of the lens, and it is said to be positive when it's found opposite. When the object is found opposite the lens, all right, and the image distance is the image distance is negative when the image is actually virtual, all right. When it's what virtual, when it's virtual, and the it is, is positive when the image is what real when the image is real when it's what real please take note of that it is very very important is there any other point that you must note please take note of these things very very important so we are done with this we are done with this or if you don't want to use this word i just said uh, illustrated this very well if i don't if you don't use this term you can say when an object is found at the that is when the image is formed at the front of the object. When it's formed at the front of the object, it is what? Real. Positive. When it's, when it's formed at the front of the object. But when it's formed at the... That is behind, when it's formed behind the object, such image is virtual and is what? Negative. Alright? So either of the both is correct. Now we are done with that. Let us now look at uh, combination of lenses. Combination of what? Lenses. Combination of lenses. A good example of instrument that uses combination of lenses is the compound microscope. The compound microscope. Compound microscope. Of course, you and I know that the compound microscope has two lenses, all right? It has the eyepiece lens and what? The objective lens. The eyepiece lens and the objective lens. Now, the eyepiece lens, of course, is the one the examiner sees through, all right? It is the one that the examiner fixes his eyes, all right. That is one the examiner views the uh, uh, what's it called now? The specimen. Why the objective? Why the objective lens is that lens that is close to the specimen that is being viewed? All right. Please take note of that. It is very very important. Okay. 
We said that copper microscope has two lenses, the eyepiece lens and the what? The uh, objective lens. Then how would you or uh, how would you demonstrate the magnification of these two guys? Alright? Please, the total magnification of a of a compound microscope, for example, alright, it is the products of objective lens and the products it is the product of objective lens and what the eyepiece lens the magnification of the compound microscope it is a product of objective lens and what eyepiece lens please take note of that it is very very important please the image formed by microscope is being virtual inverted and what magnified take note of that very, very important these are images formed by a compound microscope all right so that is what you have to note all right but in terms of uh, in terms of astronomical telescope in terms of astronomical telescope all right the magnification all right, is written as a ratio of as the focal length of the eyepiece lens and the focal length of the of the objective lens to the focal length of the eyepiece lens. Compound is just the product, all right. But in, in an uh, astronomical uh, telescope, it is this over what this, which is. The focal length of the eye of the objective lens to, to what the focal length of the eyepiece lens. Please take note of that, it is very, very important. And of course, you know that we also have what is called Galilean microscope. Galilean microscope. Okay, so uh, let us now look at the power of microscope. The power of microscope. Sorry, the power of lens, rather. The power of lens. Power of lens. The power of what? Lens. Please, power of lens. The unit is in diopar. Is in, the unit is the word diopar. The T is voiceless. The unit of the power of lens, of a lens, is called what? Diopar. And diopar is equals to uh, like centimeter per meter, all right? Centimeter, or you can say centi per meter. Centi per meter, all right? This unit is also equals this. So that is yours, the expression of, of power of what? Lens. But to illustrate it, I'll have 1 over focal length. And this is what in meters or 100 over focal length, and of course, this very one is in centimeter or 100 diopar over focal length. All right, so this is the formula. Take for example, if, if you are given that if the if the focal length, if the focal length of a concave lens, of a concave lens is maybe is twenty centimeter. So how would you express this in terms of what power? Now, of course, automatically, since they are giving us the focal length relating to concave lens. Definitely, it means that in focal length, we are going to be having what? Minus 20 centimeter. Minus what? 20 centimeter. Because we said that in, in concave length, focal length and radius of curvature is what? Negative. But if you are expressing it in diopar, if you are expressing it in diopar, if I should bring this 20 into this place, what will I be having? I'll have this going to this, right? So two year one, two years what? Five. It means that we have what negative 
5 diopa. You see that? Negative 5 diopa. What if it was convex lens? Of course, convex lens, you have it to the what? Um, positive, which is what? Plus, plus 20. Is it plus 20 now we have? Okay, yes. Of course, this one is what? Plus 20, plus 20 because uh, 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 focal length and radius of curvature is called in convex lens are what? Positive, okay? Now, if it is positive here, it means that it is also positive 5 diopa. Positive 5 what? Diopa. So, this is how to actually solve it, all right? It is very, very simple. Take note that this is the formula of what? Power of a lens and it's denoted as what? Diopa. Please, this word diopa, it is called the optician unit. Optician unit of power of lens, of power of a lens. To ask you, the optician unit of power of a given lens is called which of these? It is not this. The original one is what? The diopa. But I said that the diopa is also the same as what? Centimeters, all right? So please take note of that. Apart from what we've written, apart from what we have written already, please, the relationship, the relationship between, the relationship between power of lens, power of lens, uh, objects, power of lens objects and image distance and image distance the power the relationship between the power of lens of a given object and image distance is called what? Lens equation. Lens what? Equation. Lens equation. And it is given as P equals 1 over F plus 1 over what? U. That's 1 over, uh, you have V plus 1 over, don't forget, power is 1 over F equals 1 over U over what? Plus 1 over V. So, the same thing, of course, you know, in mirrors, the mirror formula is usually 1 over F equals 1 over U plus what? 1 over what? V. Alright, so please take note of that. It is very, very important. However, however, the magnification of lens and mirror in terms of equation are the same. Magnification is given as what? Image heights over object heights over object heights, alright? equals image distance image distance over waiting object distance object what distance so that is what we have it today both in lenses and what mirrors good good i believe that has been what established now if let's analyze separated lenses and lenses that are in contact, all right? Separated, because I, I just left it exposed. Separated lenses and uh, lenses in contact. Lenses in contact. Now, if I have an illustration such as this, all right, I have two lenses in this form, for example, and I have a what I have here are two lenses. I'll call this lens one, lens two. Of course, they have their respective uh, radius of curvature, and I have this. Uh, First focal length, first focal length, and what? What I have here is what? Second 
focal length. All right. Now, please, when you are expressing the focal length, when you are expressing the focal length of lenses that are in contact, they are closely joined together. It is written as 1 over f equals 1 over f plus 1 over f to this one, right? Because we are referring to two lenses now, right? Two lenses, two lenses. 1 over f equals 1 over f1 plus 1 over what? f2 all right this this is for the lenses that are in contact you see they are in contact but as for the ones that are separated as for the lenses that are separated they are expressed differently if i have two lenses such as this and i have another one such as this there's a distance between the two respective lenses i will denote it as what d so here is lens 1, lens 2, C1, C2, and of course you have your F1, alright? This is your F1, and this is your what? F2. So what I've just expressed is called the uh, lens marker equation, lens marker what? Equation. Now I'm having two lenses, alright? Now that you have distance included now that you have distance included in this in this very guy i'm here to express this lens marker equation now that you have distance which is d between these two lenses if you want to express it is different from the first one we expressed so the the lenses of that guy the focal length of this expression is going to be one over f it will be one over f equals one over f1 plus 1 over f2 minus d over f1 f2 all right so that this is what you have it to be it is very very important to two lenses that are joined together is just simply 1 over f equals 1 over f1 plus 1 over f2 that is just it but when they are separated by a distance d you have the formula as this F1 times F2 that is what they are products. Take note of that. Now let us now analyze lens marker equation. What I want to note is just the equation. If I'm expressing the relationship between radius, that is radius of curvature one, radius of curvature two, all right, there may be a refractive index one and refractive index what? So what will I do? I say 1 over f equals refractive index 1 over refractive index 2 minus 1. 1 over arrow 1 plus 1 over what? Arrow 2. That is when you are expressing the relationship between two arrows, two ends, such as the one you have in this expression. Please take note that in concave lens, in concave lens, Arrow 1 is negative, but arrow 2 is what? Positive. But in convex lens, in convex lens, arrow 1 is positive, but arrow 2 is what? Negative. Alright? Please take note that at arrow 1, image is not formed. Image is not formed, but in arrow 2, an image is what? Formed. Alright? In terms of... Uh, how do I put it now? Okay. I have 1 over f equals ng minus 1. ng minus 1. Then I have 1 over arrow 1 plus 1 over what? Arrow 2. Alright, so what I have here is uh, lens what? Glass. Lens glass. Please take note of these equations. I think at this point we are done with this particular aspect. In my previous year, that is in my next class, we are going to be treating how images are formed by lenses. When an object is placed at different position, all right, what kind of images are formed and what are their characteristics? All right, so please at this point, we'll call it a day. Thanks for watching. Do have a wonderful day. Please, if you know you have learned something in today's video, 
endeavor to subscribe like share and comment do have a wonderful day